Hello, first grade scientists, and welcome back to Science with Mrs. Miller. Today in lesson three, we will be comparing and contrasting plant parent plants with their offspring. So that's just a fancy way of saying that we'll be telling how parent plants and their offspring or their baby plants are the same and different from each other. Do you remember in our last lesson how we talked about how traits can be inherited from your family members? Well, guess what other offspring inherit traits from their parent? Can you guess? What are we talking about today? You guessed it, plants. That's right. You know, this really blew my mind to think about. I I don't I have a confession to make. I don't really have much of a green thumb. That means I'm not really the best at growing things, but this summer I really started to get into a little bit of gardening and I bought myself a tomato plant and this tomato plant when I bought it it was just a little baby and I thought to myself, where are the tomatoes? <laughs> And then I realized, well, this baby plant, it won't stay a baby. It's going to grow up. It's going to become an adult plant and have tomatoes on it. And I just thought, oh, wow, that's really cool and really amazing. So we're going to be talking today about parent plants and the baby plants. So let's get started. I have a video that I would like for us to watch. It's called Plant Parents and Their Offspring. And we'll learn more about this topic. Our learning goal says, I can find connections between plant parents and their offspring. Remember, offspring is just a fancy way of saying baby. Now, every living thing goes through something called a life cycle. Go ahead and say life cycle. Life cycle. Good. A life cycle are the different stages of life that a living thing goes through as it grows. So for example, let's look at this picture. There's a little boy with his mommy. Now that little boy is not going to stay a little boy forever. I mean, I know I always tell you first graders, you're getting too tall and I want you to stay tiny. But in all reality, you're going to end up growing bigger. Some of you are probably going to be taller than me one day. That's because you're going to go through a life cycle. You're going to start out a you start out as babies, then you grow into toddlers and kids. Eventually, I can't believe it, but you're going to be a teenager. And then one day you're going to be an adult. Oh my goodness gracious. So you're going to go through a life cycle. You're going to start as something, but as you grow, you're going to change quite a bit. Plants are the exact same way. I'm going to show you a plant life cycle. Now this little plant is the offspring. And then eventually it's going to grow all the way up to be the adult. Now, what do you notice about the offspring and the adult? They're totally different, right? But you know what? If I look really closely, I can kind of see some similarities or ways they're the same. Do you notice any similarities between the offspring and the adult plant? Can you name some similarities, some ways that they're the same across two fingers? Go ahead and do that right now. Okay, let's hear what she has to say. I think the seed and the roots are the same, but also, you know, those long leaves are in both of them, and they're about the same color. Now watch what happens when we take a look at all the different stages of this plant's life cycle. Wowza. Now, do you see, if you get your finger on the offspring and you go all the way up to the adult, what do you notice is happening? Yeah, the leaves are getting longer. What else? The flower starts to grow. Yep, and then it does open up until it gets nice and tall and the flower is in full bloom. Now, even though the offspring doesn't exactly look exactly like the adult, I can still tell that they're related because they have a lot of things in common. 
But how do I know other plants are related? This one I know because I told you. And also the whole life cycle is in one big long row. But I was going to walk out in the woods. I want to see the whole life cycle. I just see parts of it. So I need to know how I can tell. So how do you know? If I saw these little buds, I would have no idea what plants they went to. But there are different things we can look for. First, we can look at the leaves. Let's look up close to the leaf. What do you notice? Yeah, some leaves have a big leaf. Some leaves have a thin, uh, have a thin little leaf. Some have lines on it. Some have zigzags on the outside. Some are nice and smooth. Yeah, all the leaves are different. So one thing we can do is we can look at the leaves and see if the leaves are similar. The other thing we could do is look at the flowers. Now, as you'll notice, these flowers are all two different colors. What colors? Yeah, white and yellow. But are all these flowers the same? No, they are not. They're all from different plants. So see, the flowers can tell us a lot of information too. I wouldn't say probably that that top flower is the same as the bottom flower because even though they're white and yellow, they're totally different. They don't look related at all. So the leaves and flowers are really good clues for us. Let's look at some different families of plants and see what we notice. So let's talk about fern families first. Here's a picture of an adult fern. What do you notice about the leaves? Mm-hmm. What else do you notice? Yeah, you're right. I love ferns. I think they're beautiful. Now, but I didn't know until this lesson how adorable the fern offspring are. Here we go. Oh my goodness, aren't they so cute? I had no idea that they started out all curled up like that and then they slowly unravel. Now, even though these are very teeny, teeny, tiny, do you notice anything that's same from the adult fern to the baby fern? Yeah. They have the same type of leaves. What else do you notice? Yeah, do you see how it looks like it has one big long stem in the middle and then a whole bunch of little leaves coming off of it? That's the same thing as the adult fern. Perfect. So in this case, the leaves are really similar, and that's going to help me know that they're related. What about conifer families? Now, a conifer is anything that has like a needle-type leaf kind of like the needles on, on a Christmas tree. So here's an example right there. If you had to describe these leaves, what would you say? Agreed, they're long and pointy. Let's look at some conifer babies. Yeah, that's a little seedling of a conifer. What do you notice? Perfect, how are they the same, friend? They're both green and their leaves are both long needles. Good job. So that'd probably be my good guess that that's in a conifer family. Now I just want to show you one more picture because I thought this little seedling was so cute. That's a sprout in a seedling just as it's coming up. Now what would make you guess that that is part of the conifer family? Yeah, look at those long needle leaves are already growing, even from that first shoot. Pretty cool. Our learning goal says that I can find connections between plant parents and their offspring. And that's what we've been doing. So it's your turn. I want you to go ahead and seesaw your teacher. Okay, so now we are going to compare and contrast these two mangrove, mangrove trees. Here is the adult mangrove, and here is the baby mangrove, or the mangrove's offspring. So would you just take a minute to notice what is the same about them? Let's compare them. Think about what's the same. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to share with somebody next to you. I want you to share three things that are the same between the adult and its offspring. Okay, I'm going to set the timer. See if you can name three things that are the same. Ready, set, go. Stop, look, and listen. 
So let's see, what did you notice that's the same? Let's see if you came up with any of the same similarities that I'm thinking of. So one thing I'm noticing is it looks like the leaves are very similar. It's a little bit hard for us to see these leaves on the adult tree because this picture is taken from further away, but it looks like they both have tiny little pointy leaves and the leaves are green on both. Another similarity that I notice, this is really interesting, is that the roots of both trees come up out of the ground. That's something that's sort of unique to the mangrove family. Another similarity that I notice is that both are growing in or around water. It looks like, I don't know if you could see, but it looks like there's water back behind this mangrove tree. And this mangrove tree is growing directly into the water. Very interesting. Now let's see if we could notice two differences between the adult mangrove and the offspring or the baby mangrove. So think right now, what are two differences that you notice? Let's contrast them. Think about the differences between them. Hmm. What's different? Okay, again, I'll give you 10 seconds. I want you to share two things that you notice that are different between the adult and its offspring. Ready, set, turn and talk. All right, time's up. One, two, three, eyes on me. So let's see if you came up with the same differences that I came up with. Well, number one, I noticed that the adult mangrove has a lot more leaves on it. I also noticed that the adult mangrove is much smaller and the offspring or the baby mangrove is a lot smaller. Something else that I noticed that's different is the color of the trunk and the color of the the color of the trunk and the color of the roots. So both the trunk and the roots in the adult mangrove look brown where the trunk and the roots of the offspring or the baby mangrove have like a reddish tint. Next, we're going to compare and contrast the tomato plant offspring to its parent tomato plant. So I mentioned earlier in this lesson that I had bought myself a baby tomato plant at the beginning of the summer, maybe more towards the spring actually. And this is what it looked like when I first bought it from the shelf. But now it looks more like this. So let's compare them. What's the same between them? I'm going to give you 15 seconds to name as many things as you can. What do you notice that's the same between the baby tomato plant and the adult tomato plant? Ready, set, turn and talk. All right, so let's see if you came up with any of the same similarities that I came up with. I noticed that their leaves look very similar to each other. So their leaves are both green and they both have like pointy edges. Did you notice that too? Something else that I noticed that's the same is their, their stem. So the stem of the, of the offspring 
Looks like it's rather thick, doesn't it? And so does the stem of the adult tomato plant. Now, something else that's sort of hard to see from these pictures, but I'm going to tell you I observed in my own tomato plants at home, is that the stem, see how it has like this little fuzz on it? The baby plant has sort of this fuzz. Well, the adult tomato plant also has that fuzz on it. Very interesting. Now let's notice how they're different. So again, I'll give you 15 seconds to notice as many differences as you can. Ready, set, turn and talk. All right, one, two, three, eyes on me. So did you notice their differences too? Well, one obvious difference is that the baby tomato plant doesn't have any tomatoes on it. It doesn't have any fruit yet. Where the adult tomato plant does have tomatoes on it. Did you know that tomatoes are a type of fruit? They are, in fact. A lot of people think that they're vegetables, but tomatoes have seeds inside of them, so that makes them fruit. What's another difference that you noticed? Oh, the, the adult tomato plant is much, much larger than the offspring, right? And something else? Let's see. Well, they both have thick, stem, thick stems, but the stems of the adult tomato plant look thicker and sturdier, right? Okay, now it's time for your activity sheet. So if you're at home, you will find this sheet in your Google Classroom, and if you're in school, your teacher will give it to you. Let's read through the directions together. The directions say, use this Venn diagram to compare and contrast the tomato plant offspring to its parent tomato plant. And then in the middle, I like to start with the middle whenever I'm looking at a Venn diagram. By the way, have you ever used a Venn diagram before? Raise your hand if you've used a Venn diagram before. Maybe when you were in kindergarten you used one. A Venn diagram is a very useful tool for helping to compare and contrast or tell how two things are the same and different from each other. So whenever I fill in a Venn diagram, I like to start with the middle, which says what's the same, okay? And then I like to look at the differences. So this side says young tomato plant, what's different? And this side says adult tomato plant, what's different? I got started on mine. I'm going to show you how mine looks so far. All right, so so far I wrote for what's the same, well, both have green leaves, so I wrote green leaves. Can you come up with two more things that are the same? You can pause the video here to add in two more things that are the same between the baby tomato plant and the adult tomato plant. Go ahead and pause. After you have finished writing what's the same, you're going to write about what's different. So one obvious difference is that the young tomato plant is small and the adult tomato plant is big. Can you come up with two other differences between them? Okay, you can go ahead off to do that and I will be seeing you next time in science. So keep up the great work, everybody. It was so much fun learning with you today. Enjoy your day.